all new episode of the Lamont Experience, brought to you by Boston Cannabis Week. Got to give a shout out, of course, to MCR Labs and Boston Hemp Company. Today's episode, we have a cat that I've gotten to know pretty good over the past year. Uh, one of the baddest DJs around. Dude is the king of the mixtapes, man. The god of Merrimack Valley. Welcome my guest today, DJ Deadeye. What up, man? What's good, man? Thank you for having me, bro. Appreciate oh, you, bro. Of course, man. Yo, I'm loving that backdrop, by the way. That backdrop is dope. I got mad other random shit in here. It's just the lighting is crazy, so. I got like, I got like the, that's like a Pac poster up here. Um, that, that's 50, and, right? That's 50 up there. Pencil, that's 50. I got um, 36 chambers signed by the, the whole clique. Oh, man. I hate you, dog. I got, <laughs> I got this shit signed by all the boot camp members. Done. Yeah, I got a bunch of shit, man. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to slide through and sit in that room for a minute and just stare at everything. Yeah, I got mad posters and shit that like I just haven't put up or I gotta get them framed because by by now they're like withered, you know, because they're so old. I gotta do something with my backdrop, and my shit is just a wall. Yeah, and like Will Smith. I interview. I did an interview in here before, and people were like, "Yo, oh, I got this little Pac poster thing too, but good." Done. That's like hip hop dreamland, right? That's like hip hop Sesame Street, right? Yeah, there. it's weird. It just became like a L Pac room, like out of nowhere. Like, got like two Pac joints. I got, I got the squad joint too. I had this made at a video shoot. That's so. Up. Yeah. So oh, were yeah. you like, were you like, you know, because um. And you know how back in the day it was like, who you with, Pac and Biggie? Were you were you on the side of one or the other, or were you just like, I rock with both of them? Not really. I rock with both of them. I'm more of a, like a music guy. Um, obviously, more probably more influenced by Big, because just being four hours from New York, you know. But the East Coast. Um, the East Coast but Pac, Pac had the more. I feel like Pac had more influential type songs because his shit was just more well-rounded. He was more yeah. like, in a way, I, I, I don't want to misuse the word here, but he was more militant or so more like when it comes to the culture and how, how yeah. people of color are perceived. Like he was more What's in that? your face about his opinions and I always appreciate that about him. Yeah, uh, man. I mean, his mom, you know, you know. His mom was in the Black Panthers, right? Yeah. yeah. Word up. Yeah. He just yeah, had more, I feel like he just had more eclectic things to say. Big, yeah. big was more precise, but like he might he might have made you feel better than Pac, maybe. <laughs> well, I mean, big, I mean, big, big told stories of his life, told stories of the street. Yeah. Uh, Pac, and Pac and, and more, he made party records. He made a lot of party records. Yeah, and it, it was like so. a feel good vibe with Big. With Pac, it was more like real deal, like shit is fucked up, you know? True that. And then, you know, I, it's, the weird thing is like, I feel you on all of that. Like, Pac made some dope conscious records and everything. But like, my favorite Pac song, for whatever reason, is To Live and Die in LA. Yo. I just, I just buy it to live and die in that. It's just such a vibe. Nah, word up. You know the timing too, like, I just start thinking about 96 and I'm like, yo, it's like the perfect summer record and shit like that, you yeah. know? It was, it was, and it was the first video off it. He had already, he had just passed. Yeah, yeah. That was on, uh, what, Machiavelli, right? Yeah, on Machiavelli, yeah. Which is a slept on Pac record that people kind of poo poo a little. But that shit is fire. That's one of my. I'm favorite actually, ones. I'm, su I'm surprised that people sleep on it just because. I think it's the amount. Not just I think it's the amount. I think it's the amount of shitting on people that he did on the record, bro. Okay, well, yeah, that's you know, this, I ain't never heard a harder diss track than hit him up. And then he got two on on Machiavelli. He got bomb first. The first track, he's just fucking shitted on dudes. And then the last song against all odds is, you know, Flabby Holmes, uh, Larry Holmes, Flabby and Sick. <laughs> you already know, man. Killing so, you got, now. so that's oh, that's crazy. So that's like Pac, Pac and Big, really two of your biggest influences. You know, Those, I mean, they're in there. You know, they're they I was already like 
too immersed in hip hop by then to have them be like, oh my God, I'm like really influenced by Pac or Big, you know? Like my shit was more like, like Run DMC. Oh yeah. And then like, um, you know, Cypress Hill and stuff like that, you know what I mean? And it re- yo, it really reflects on your beats, dog. When I listen to your music, it's Word. such a East. It brings me back to that era of where like, hip hop was like regional. You know what I mean? Like how hip hop was like, you could tell where Cat was from based yep. on what they sounded like. And cats yep. didn't sound alike from even even neighborhoods. You know what I mean? Like yeah. now it's different. It's kind of, you know, like how do you yeah. toe that line? Like how do you balance keeping like, keeping your sound as real as you want it to be with sort of the economic changing of today's hip hop mainstream? Yeah, I mean, it's tough. If you want to ride that mainstream line, then, you know, you're more looking at what's going on and trying to not emulate, but, you know, try to ride waves and shit like that. Um, yeah, fuck that. I, yo, I feel you. Fuck that wave riding shit. Yeah, like, I can't do it. I, like I can't it. do it, you know. Uh, like I said, I, 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 I was I caught down with hip hop when I was super young. So you had to be an individual back then, heavy. You couldn't be like anybody else or sound like anybody else or look like anybody else. Or you'd be like, you'd have to fight or you'd get kicked out of whatever circles you was in, you know? Cats would come see you. Yo, facts. You'd Cats get, would come see you. You'd get, in, you'd get in beef over that shit, yo. Biting was yeah. not loud at all. So uh-huh. I come from that school where, you know, I'll, I'll do something that nobody's doing just cause, you know, I don't want to- I'm the kind of person that's always life. like, like, I'm the kind of person that's always like, yo, whatever you're doing, if I feel it's authentic to you, then I will rock with it. It doesn't have to, it doesn't matter what it is, as long yeah. as you're living your truth. Because you can always, especially cats like from where we're from, like East Coast cats, you yeah. can smell a phony, right? You can go, most up, most up. Mm, I don't like from the way anywhere. You could, you could spot yeah. them from Cali, you know, they could be like South dudes that moved to Cali and like trying to front like they West Coast dudes. Yeah. You can spot them from a mile away, man. You know what I mean? Like always do you. I mean, I'm all, listen, I tell people. And really, what? No, no, I'm going to say, I always tell people, man, you know, get that money. I'm never going to hate on your hustle, but. Of course, of course. I, I don't have, it doesn't have, like, I don't, if I don't vibe with it, I don't vibe with it. But I, you know, do whatever. But like, I don't vibe with it because I, I don't feel like, yo, if it's, if it's authentic to you and real, like, it don't matter to me what the sound is, as long as it's something, obviously, that's like, listenable and like if it hits all the check you know all the check marks and shit and it's authentic and real then like i'll give you your props like it's maybe not for me but the craziest thing i because you know when you're younger you remember run dmc they just seemed like it was so larger than life be like oh run dmc and then i learned that those cats are collectively younger than kid and play Wow. Yeah, like kid, like if the order, the order's like, I think like kids, the oldest of all four, and then play, and then I think Jam Master, no, I think DMC, Jam Master J, and I think runs the youngest. Wow. Yo, that's the power of marketing, right? Yo, facts. Like, facts, yo. I would have never get, I would have bet all my money, I would have bet all $80 like- in my bank account. <laughs> They're like, yo, this guy's mad old. We gotta call him kid. Keep him young. <laughs> that shit crazy. I never even knew that. That's bananas. Yo, so let's get into your current stuff, man. Your, your, your upcoming projects. Your, your, you got Power Meetings uh, mixtape. You got Intervention. Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, the, the mixtape. Yeah, the mixtape will be out hopefully next week. I'm just waiting on the art and then the shit will be out. Like, I don't know. I like meant uh com- like make them in my brain before before even doing them like if it's something for me that i come up with some ill creative situation then i'm i'm going to the 10th degree with it you know but if it's something where we're just showcasing new guys then boom i just put the together the fly shit that works where it's not like me playing some shit that i would never play ever no matter what i'm still playing my type of shit and then there's ones where it's like um you know, artist driven. Like I did one with um years ago that that still people still fuck with is with um 
term and MOP, I did one. Um, and that's just term and MOP on the whole tape. And then I did one with Ransom where it's just literally 30 unreleased Ransom songs. Yeah, that's what's up, man. So that perfect and then, blend. And then, I got, and then I got somewhere, it's just me being creative here. So there's like all types of shit on it, like blends and drops from different people, you know? It's just like how I feel when I'm going into it, you know? And at this point, there's no, uh, there's no sense of urgency for me to do them. So it's not like I'm like, yo, I gotta be hot on the streets tomorrow. Like, it ain't yeah. like that, you know what I'm saying? I feel like that's when the best work comes out though. When you, when you can just take the time to fully put all what you have to put into it without feeling like yeah. you have to hurry up or rush yeah. a project and- uh, I haven't like, done we'll a look- tape like that in a long time. Like a long time, probably since I started doing, actually probably since like 2010 was the last time I did that type of shit. Maybe even before that, because we were doing for politics, um, mixtapes and things like that in that time. So I wasn't really like focused on putting out, you know, heat for the streets. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I did that MOP tape. There's a, the first song on that is an MOP song that isn't on anything else but my tape. Because at this point, it's like, who haven't you worked with? You work with everybody, son. It's been kind of crazy, really, to tell you the truth. Um, that whole progression and how, like, not how fast it was, but how, like, in the moment, how fast it is. You know what I mean? It's, I like, mean, and you're living your dream, right? Like, I like see the it. first... The first like big tour we did outside of the U.S. was, I mean, outside of Massachusetts or New England was with uh, Sean P. and and Held the Skelta in like '04. So like from that to like '07 going overseas with Cormega, to then '08 touring with uh, Red and Meth, and oh then you know what I'm saying, then going to Japan and and doing twenty thousand people uh, venues in Europe. And then going on tour with AZ and like just all that shit. Um, La Coca, House of Pain, like just shit that like when you're young, you're like, yo, this is crazy, you know? Like this this is the type of music I love. So then now be cool with them. It's just yeah, sometimes it's I got I gotta take that time out sometimes to just like really take it all in, you know? It, it's like in the moment, you just cause you're living it. So you're just like, yo, out here doing it. But then later on, you sit down and you go, what? Yeah, and then even, yeah. even other type of shit, like like when we did that that tour in 08 with Red and Meth, like we were the official openers for that tour. And then um, it was uh, it was two months and it was across the country. So every, you know, maybe 10 or 15 shows, there would be a new opener. So like at some point it was, uh, we got to like the Midwest, they added like Alchemist and Evidence from Dilated. Then after a while they added some more like Wu-Tang guys. Then they added Little Brother. Uh, it wasn't really Little Brother, it was like Pooh and like Scudder and these guys. But they were on the tour for like 10 or 15 dates too. And they, like Red MF still kept us right before them, even though there were artists on the tour that were bigger than us. That's love, yo. That's what's up. That's some other shit, you know what I mean? But yeah. it was just the energy. We would get the crowd to where they were ready for Red and Meth, you know what I'm saying? Like, our, shit, our, shit's, our shit's a lot of energy on stage, you know? That's respect, man. Like, yeah, that's shit you, man. crazy. That, like, your, your resume, I mean, that's like if I got to work with, like, you know, I'm a comic, you know, so if I got to work with, you tell me, oh, Chappelle, uh, uh, Eddie Murphy's gonna be there, you know what I'm saying? Like, all these, Red Fox is gonna be the best. Like that's yo, like that's that. If you, talk to you, if you could talk to twelve year old you and be like, "Yo, one day you don't get to work with everybody," I'd just be like, I mean, "Yo, you, bro, put in the work and like trust the process." Because at times, that. at times you can get to a point where you're like, "Man, fuck this," you know. Uh, do you mean? What do you mean, like being on the road? Tedious, it's it like tedious just and, financially and or like being away from family or yeah. just a non-normal human that you have to be you know well that's the part that sucks like as far as performing goes like when i have to go places and i think people get a weird idea of your life 
because you do that stuff. I know for me, like people think, oh, Lamont, you and so-and-so doing so -and -so, such and such. You must be out here getting it in every night, all night. And it's like, nah, I do the gig. And then I might hang out for a minute and talk to a couple people. But an hour later, I'm in the hotel room by myself eating chicken fingers. Like that's kind of what it is normally. Yep. You know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, at the after hours spot, especially in some towns I don't know. Like I'm not just gonna be out here in these Facts. towns. You should come hang out with us at so and so. I don't know y'all. Facts. Sometimes it's cool, like but you know, a lot of times you just gotta, you know, go back to the hotel and just chill out, man. Sometimes <laughs> the vibe, safe, sometimes man. the vibe is right, and then sometimes, you know, like because, um, like one time I remember I went to I went to New York. I was going to Buffalo, but then they had to drive me from Buffalo to uh, this real small town, two hours outside of Buffalo, for this thing I was doing, and I don't remember the name of the town right now. But all I remember is when we got to the town, my hotel room, my hotel was coming up. And on the left, I look across the street and I see uh, a guns and ammo store, right? And the sign legitimately said, guns, letter N, ammo, right? <laughs> I'm not kidding. And across the street, like right across the street, behind the guns and ammo store was a, a fucking elementary school. Oh, like shit. crazy. And then on the, on the, it, it, the guns and ammo store looked very ranch style, right? And there was a rocking chair, like on the front stoop of the guns and ammo store. And I don't know if I'm just remembering it this way or maybe I smoked too much, but there was like an eight year old kid sitting in a rocking chair holding the rifle. That's what I, that's how I remember it. <laughs> and I just remember looking at that going, yeah, I'm going to be in my room till the show starts. I'm not hanging out. Yep. I'm yep. not going anywhere. It's, not, it's not worth it in some places, you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you got any, like, crazy road stories where you're like, yo, how did we get out of that? Shit. Too many, bro. Oh, yeah? It's you share any many. of them? Uh, I'm trying to think of something, like, off the top of my head. Um, one time we was in, we was on at that tour actually in 08 and we was, uh, we was in Santa Ana, I think, or Santa Cruz or some shit, some shit up top, like near uh, Sacramento. Okay. And we damn near got into it with all the bouncers at the spot, yo. We're like part of the tour. We're trying to tell them like, and they're trying to treat us like we just some random locals or openers, like, like wait, like wait outside shit. We're like, nah, we got hotel rooms. We got riders. We got people on the list like we here what's up and they was just being mad rude and shit and we almost had to fight these niggas before the show like damn like fight security before you go on stage like what the fuck is going on you know what i'm saying anything else you want to promote anything else you want to get out there yeah man um i just executive produced the album for my st brother artisan it's called cinematic um, I put it all together with him. Um, I'm gonna be doing a lot more of those. I did two already with Runt Dog from Gilla House that I work with, who's Red Man's artist out of Jersey. Oh, yeah. um, I did two of those, but I, I got a new one with him too coming. Um, actually, probably October 30th right now. I'm looking for the date. It's called Silence Punk. It's got Nems on it. It's got um, Rusty Jux, Keith Murray. Uh, I think that's about it right now for that. And then uh, the cinematic joint just came out. I got the physicals for that. Um, you can DM me on IG or hit up the Bandcamp, djdeadeye.bandcamp.com. And you can get that, that out. You know what I mean? I got the EP out, Last Batch. I dropped that in April. I got the Double Impact with DJ Beans Part 3 that came out in June. Uh, Power Meetings 3 will probably be out next week. It'll be on my Bandcamp and, um, you know, it'll be up on, on Mixcloud or something like that. Um, and then I got the Silence Punk for run October 30th. And then um, I'm looking for November for the, the follow-up album to my first album. called This one's called Intervention. The first one was called Substance Abuse. Um, this one's gonna be a lot of like underground favorite dudes and shit like that, that people like. And then I'm um, trying to get Last Batch 2 out before the end of the year. That way I can hit 2021 with, with the real, real, real uh, deal album, um, Independency, looking like maybe June, May or June or something next year. That's got a bunch of heavy hitters on it. Um, you know, that's 
it's a bigger it's a bigger it's a bigger lineup than the album i'm trying to drop now so i'm trying to get these like kind of underground joints out first before next year when i hit them with the big boy shit you know okay man yo you out there getting it in man you killing the game right here just because we ain't touring don't mean we ain't working (laughs) no doubt no doubt so it's dj dead eye dot band camp yes dot com DJ DJDeadEye.BandCamp.com. Make sure y'all check that out. Before we go, I got one more question. Yes, uh, uh, no, we follow each other on Twitter, so I don't know if you ever see. I tweet a lot about Halloween, right? A lot about yeah, Halloween. You were season. saying how, like, October is, like, it's your month. Yesterday, you were saying, like, it's I love month. it. I love Halloween. Like, that's yeah, my I, favorite. I, 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 you know what's crazy is that, like, I mean, it's definitely, like, a New England thing, too, but I know and like am cool with mad people who like this is their favorite time of the year. Yeah. Like the weather and mixed in with the spooky shit. You know what I'm saying? Oh, the weather is lovely on a normal year. You know, this is all four sports at some point will kind of mix together. Yeah. They'll all be going. Hoodies, uh, you know. Hoodies. Yeah, I love it, man. But Halloween, chief among all that stuff for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nah, but I was going to ask you. I was gonna ask you, do you have a favorite horror movie? Uh, I don't know about a favorite horror movie, but I have favorite. I have a, a couple favorite horror characters. Okay, that's a better question. All Thanks right, so. even better. Like, Who's your favorite? I gotta movie? say, I gotta uh, say, top five. I gotta say, okay. number one gotta be Jason Voorhees. All right, it's just he's too ill. He doesn't die. He resurrects. He fucks people up. He stabs motherfuckers with spears through fucking porta potties. Like, there's nothing to be said. He's the ghost. Yo, his kills are wild, disrespectful. Now, wild, yo. The L one is on in the Manhattan one where homies just snuffing him a million times. This nigga knocks his head off the, the roof, yo. yo. <laughs> Julius. <laughs> so, Jason number one. Um, number two, I probably gotta go with Freddy. Cause Freddy had different ways of they like they like remixed the same idea like a bunch of times you know what i'm saying but he always had the punch lines he was funny yo he was ill yeah. you know what i'm saying same with chucky funny. like i don't know if i got chucky on three but he was ill because he would say the wildest shit like he'd be like you fucking bitch it'd be a doll and shit like it's just but <laughs> um he was just funny to me he wasn't really like a like a ill horror, like scary shit, but he was funny as hell. Um, Hellraiser's in there. Pinhead, Michael Myers. Okay. Michael Myers is in there. Um, you know, that's that's probably the top. Well, that's five. five. That's, that's five the right there. Five. You know, there's oh, other man. honorable mention ones, but they don't got like the ill character person. You know what I'm saying? Like Poltergeist was a scary ass movie when I was little and shit, and fuck it was. Up. And uh, what's the other shit? Um, the shit with the chick's neck flips. What's the shit? Exorcist. Oh, Exorcist. Yeah, them shits was yeah. ill, but they don't have like they didn't have like the ill character guy. You know what I'm saying? I remember back in the day, man, when I was up in middle school, one of my friends was like, we was like 11, and he was like, they would they would show those movies on like Channel 56. If you're in Boston, yep. you know what I'm talking I do about. I remember Channel 56. Yeah, and uh, he was like, they're showing The Exorcist this weekend. You gotta watch it. But he's like, if you watch it alone and you eat peanuts, you'll shit bricks. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like, what like it's such a kid thing to say. <laughs> yo, son. Yo, you know what? Well, yo, I got to give honorable mention, though. When I was a kid, yo, and that fucking Jaws music would come on, son. Oh, yeah. Yo, I was not even near no water, but I'd be like, yo. dun dun I was like, yo, that shit was an LL flick. That shit used to have motherfuckers pet. Because that beat is like, somebody's coming. Yeah, something's somebody's coming. Somebody's coming. Same with the Jason with the ch 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 that shit. You'd be like, yo, what? But yeah, th- there's a lot of them. That genre is incredible, but those got to be the top fives. I mean, I do like um, some of the older shit. Uh, Night of the Living Deads and things like that. But. Night of the Living Dead's great. Dawn of the Dead's great. I'm a big zombie nerd. I love zombie movies. Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. But yeah, I feel you on that. Like Jason Voorhees, Jason and Michael Myers to me like switch up. One. And you know. Two. You know what the they're zombie? They're both unstoppable. Yeah. No, they're both unstoppable. 
it's like it's like Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan. Yeah, or Undertaker, really, with that sit up. They be like right. sitting up like the Undertaker. <laughs> yo, real talk, yo. Um, but you know what the zombie shit needs to be ill to like really blow. I thought World War Z did a good job of it, but they need like a zombie character, like. Like one dude who's like running, yeah, like a Jason or like a Michael Myers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but it's hard to do that because then he got to talk. You know what I mean? The closest they came to that was in I think Land of the Dead, but it was like that one black dude who worked, who was like a mechanic, and he was <laughs> leading the way, but he didn't speak, yeah. but like he was leading the way. That's the only yeah. time I saw a zombie is like the lead zombie. Yeah, I feel like they get they don't get enough props, bro. And I say this too before we go. Freddy Krueger was hilarious, but I don't hilarious. think people give enough credit to Michael Myers because Michael Myers, if you remember in the original movie, he, that homegirl was like in the bed and she thought her boyfriend was coming back and Michael Myers put the sheet on with the glasses over it. Yep. Come on, son. <laughs> he didn't have to do any of that. He could have just showed up just the way he was. He did that because he thought it would be funny. Yeah, nah, he's a he's a funny dude. Like, you ever see that meme where it's like people looking out the window and it's um him chilling like in the yard, like doing yep. different shit, not even saying nothing, just just Damn. chilling. Yeah, he's funny. Like, he gotta be in the like the atmosphere gotta be funny. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Kind of like Jason. Like Jason could be funny, but overall he's like on some creep shit. Yep, basically. You know what I mean? He's he gotta be the goat. He got like 15 flicks or something. Like motherfucker never yeah, like died. A, yeah, like 14, 15, yep, yep. I we mean, got 24 hour, 24-7 horror movies too. Uh, AMC, sci-fi, all month. That's why I'm gonna be soon as we done with this. <laughs> word, word. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm gonna motherfucking grub, yo, in the free. Oh, that too. Yep, that too. Yes, sir, yes, sir. But yo, Deadeye, listen, man, thank you for coming on with us today. Thank you for showing up. All day. I know yeah, shit. Man, everybody out there. COVID, you know? Well, oh, yeah. I'll be in the crib, man. I'll be right here in the crib. Word is born, man. I'll be, I'll, I'll be at the crib. I'll be at the crib at the office, at the spot. You know what I mean? That's it for me. That's it. Creative mode, you know. bro. And dad mode. That's it. That's it, yo. So keep creating, yo. Everybody check out DJ Deadeye at Bandcamp.com. Uh, check that at out. At Dot on everything. At Dot on Twitter and on Instagram. Yes, yes. Follow the man. Dude's a good follow. He's a good dude. Yes, I'm glad to know you, man. I can't wait to chop it up with you again when all this is over. Thanks for coming yes, on once again. Thank you, bro. Uh, everybody, this has been a Lamont experience. I'm Lamont. These are my experiences. Shout out to BCW. See y'all next time.